talked, I mentioned last time that you know most of these type of formation integrity tests are done with very poor quality in the field. You know, a lot of times it's literally someone looking at a, a pressure gauge that's bouncing around at the surface. Okay, and so particularly when you want to use S3 for stimulation purposes or to design a, tr a stimulation treatment, what I'm talking about there is primarily hydraulic fracture treatment. You want to know which which direction is the minimum principal stress and its magnitude. And you need to be very careful in doing these measurements, and uh, especially when it appears that S3 is close to the vertical stress. So normally, we would just estimate the vertical stress based on our sort of rules of thumb, right? One PSI per foot, something like that, okay? But if it turns out that that one PSI per foot is very close to what you're seeing, or what you're measuring or inferring as S3, then you need to take a closer look. You need to go back and log the well and get careful density logs and then integrate those density logs. Uh, I said go back and log the well. Perhaps you've already logged it. But you need to you know, actually integrate the density logs to determine the vertical stress as opposed to just using your rule of thumb um, so that you know exactly what scenario you're in. And the, the, the difference is, of course, is it could mean that your hydraulic fractures grow vertically or they grow horizontally, right? And you need to know that when you design your stimulation treatment, okay? And so and th this is a case where the, this, is a, this is actual data, and, a, and this, this is a case where this line was taken uh, from density logs, so this is the vertical stress, and then these white dots um, taken here, and one thing you'll notice is there's about five or six measurements that were taken within pretty close proximity and depth, and the, the sort of interesting thing there is that they are roughly the same magnitude and following the same trend, so it gives you some sense that they're accurate, right? But of course, they're very close to the vertical stress, and then as you go down with depth, you can see that they're uh, a little bit a little bit uh, larger than the vertical stress. And so in this case, um, you know, uh, I'm sorry, the vertical stress is a little bit larger than this is truly S3 and not the vertical stress that you're measuring. So in this case, you have a strike slip faulting re regime. And in the, in, the, in the case that you were actually measuring the vertical stress, with these tests, then you would be in a reverse fault regime. Um, so just be careful. Uh, it's important, you know, especially the primary reason that you want to know this information is so that you can design some stimulation treatment.